Guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. I'm Charlie McGrath, your host. It's still the first day of May, Wednesday, and now joining us, it is the Night of Beauty on Wide Awake News Radio. We have uh, Christina Consalo. Uh, she is sending live video, so if you want to see myself and uh, Christine, then please go to wideawakenews.com. Click on the microphone. That'll take you into the chat. There's a JTV link in there, and uh, you can watch us uh, do this program live. Uh, Christina is all kinds of information she's going to bring to the program tonight. But before we get started, let me just uh, say welcome back to the program. Great to have you on uh, again. I mean, you know, this is, I don't know, your umpteenth appearance on the program, but it's always a pleasure to have you on here. Tell us uh, where we can see your stuff, where you want people to go and look before we get rolling. Well, thanks for having me back. Uh, FukushimaFacts.com is my main website. And there are links to uh, my Twitter, my YouTube, my Facebook pages. We, we have about 20 Facebook pages now. We have uh, ones for all the, uh, the, the big profile new plants that have been having problems. We have one where people just upload mutation images. And then we have the Radchick page where we put out uh, the majority of information. You still doing? You still hosting a program a couple times a week, once a week? Yeah, the the program is twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday from one to two p.m. Eastern on uh, UCY TV. It's called Nuked Radio. And lately, we've been talking a lot about Boston because probably ninety percent of the emails that I've been getting have been questions about that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we can certainly get into that. I know that's one of the things you want to talk about. But before we do. Oh, my computer's wigging out here. I had this story pulled up here um, because it's in the realm of what we always talk to you about, which is uh, uh, nuclear power plants, radiation, the lie, the con, the industry that is uh, without rules and uh, in complete and total uh, domination by corporate special interests. Uh, there was a plastic bags, tape, broomsticks fixing a power plant, a nuclear power plant. Give us a story here because this... You sent me this uh, this image, and I played the video, and it's just it's unbelievable. I'll go ahead and put that into chat as well. But, but what's going on with this? It, it's a well, sad that, that happens all the time at Fukushima. They use shower curtains and duct tape and string and plastic bags to fix stuff, and they're doing that now at San Onofre too. In fact, a uh, a worker from inside the plant sent a picture to a local news station where they had fixed a leak. A water leak inside the plant with uh, broomsticks, duct tape, and plastic until they can get a better fix. And this is the plant that, you know, is uh, upwind from San Diego that they want to restart that's been having all kinds of problems, all kinds of leakage problems. And now we have another plant, too, uh, that's near Chicago that's been having all kinds of problems since it was hit by lightning on April the 17th. And they tried to restart that reactor and ended up with a, a problem with the sprayers that cool the fuel. So it's currently in hot shutdown. Mm. There haven't been any warnings that have gone out to the public about this. You know, they've been venting radioactive steam from their containment for two weeks now, and they haven't told anybody. Unbelievable. And this, this what was the cause of the leak uh, in uh, San Orfrey? Well, they had a problem with some pipes that were leaking that they attributed to the um, manufacturing of the pipes. I think they were made in China, and the hmm. pipes were vibrating under normal operating conditions, and they were banging together, and it was um, reducing the integrity of the pipe material. So that was the original reason why the plant was shut down about probably seven or eight months ago now. And it, it, do we know if it was an intake or an outflow uh, you know, is this this what's leaking here? Is it fresh water, uh, or is it? Or do we know? Is it just? Who knows? We knew that it was highly radioactive water that was passing through the pipe, so it was probably you know associated with the cooling system, something that's going to another area of the plant to be filtered or recycled. What the hell? When are, you know, there's going to be. Give, give me your prediction, Christina. You know. There's going to be a major, major uh, uh, Fukushima moment in the U.S., uh, no doubt about it, no, no doubt about it. I mean, every time you're on here, that you have 15 stories, 15 plants around this country that are like this, duct tape and, and broomsticks and plastic bags. Mm -hmm. Is there predictions out there? Are people saying, yeah, well, you know, within 10 years, we're going to have X number go uh, south on us? 
Well, I mean, st- statistically, yeah, it's a it's a certainty at some point. Yeah. Um, but if if people knew the uh, frequency that these events happen, uh, they they would be very alarmed. Mm-hmm. And the, the nuclear industry is just terrified of people finding out how bad these plants are run, how old they are, you know, their degraded condition, and what's going on at Fukushima too. Because if people knew the truth about that, they would demand that all these plants be shut down right now. And where are they? They're all located near, you know, huge population centers. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, again, we talk about this every time you're on as well. The whole purpose for the nuclear industry, you know, it isn't for cheap energy because it isn't cheap. It's, you know, these things do not make money. They're subsidized to the hilt. You know, their whole entire purpose in life is the same thing. You know, the press is being truthful when they talk about Iran trying to achieve nuclear energy, yeah, they do. They want that because it allows them to create fuel so they can make weapons, correct? That was the original in- intent of building reactors were to generate plutonium. That's why we had, uh, we had like almost 50 in Idaho. We had nine at Hanford. That's where all the plutonium processing was going on in the 50s and 60s. And um, then those, all that plutonium is shipped to other plants like Pantax in Texas where they assembled the bombs and now Pantax just disassembles bombs but all that stuff is on site with nowhere to go nowhere to yeah. put it that, it, that isn't going to be uh, that isn't going to be toxic uh, to humanity two minutes before the first break and then on, I promise we'll get into Boston and what you've been uh, these emails you've been dealing with but give us an update on Fukushima I mean this is this is uh, where you made your bones is covering this story well, Fukushima has been hit with a number of problems because the um, the entire site is just so poorly maintained, and they're not putting any money into doing anything to fix it in the long term. You know, they're using all these quick fixes, and in fact, there was a, a huge um, uh, circuit board system that was in the back of pickup trucks a couple miles from the site that some rats got into in the beginning of April. And these rats chewed through the wires and caused a huge outage at the plant that lasted like three and a half days. And this electricity was actually um, to help keep the fuel cool also in the seven spent fuel pools that are on site. So the temperature started rising, and then we had this plume that was detected by the CTBT, and they attributed the plume to the North Korea nuke test that was done, uh, I believe it was in the end of February. Yeah. And the CTBT lied and said that they detected um, xenon gas in the northern hemisphere 55 days after North Korea's detonation. So they tried to blame it on North Korea. This was from Fukushima. This is a complete lie that this okay, came from for those the North of, Korean for those, nuke test. For those uh, that don't know, why is it impossible for it to be from a North Korean nuke test, underground nuke test? Well, if you go to their website, look at the actual detection simulation with the weather patterns, they detected it in Japan the following day, but they reported on it that it was 55 days later. But the way the wind patterns were directed, um, this was probably associated with this rat outage, which has actually happened twice since in the last say- four weeks. <laughs> Rats have caused outages at Fukushima Daiichi three times in the last four weeks. They can't get this rodent problem under control. That's because they're 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 uh, energized. They're nuclear rats. They're <laughs> chewing. They're, they're chewing through uh, wrist sized cables. <laughs> they were pretty big. I saw pictures of them. They were pretty scary looking. I know I'm laughing about it. It's not funny, but just the way you said the rat outages. You got rat yeah. outages at Fukushima. Well, uh, what's it? It's a point, you know, it's just ridiculous at this point. Even um, Time Magazine said it's like Wiley E. Coyote is running Fukushima. <laughs> There's Acme, so many things going wrong there these days. The Acme uh, Nuclear Power Company. Uh, what is the uh, what is TEPCO's uh, uh, official line on the progress of containment? Uh, don't answer that. We'll, we'll do that on the backside of the break. Uh, I want to get, the, you know, last time we were on, well, I want to talk about all that on our next segment. We're going to be back with Christina Consalo and more Wide Awake News Radio. Please hang tight. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Christina Consalo, a.k.a. Radchick, is our guest tonight for the second hour as we continue our conversation. 
I promise uh, that I promise Christina, I promise you right now that we will get into some of these other topics. But I, I want to pick your brain a little bit still on this uh, on this issue, uh, because there was a there was a, there's a suit ongoing right from uh, service men and women who are looking for some remedy to their exposure uh, off of uh, off the coast of Japan because of the Fukushima disaster. Is there any word on how this is coming? I mean, we had you and or no, I had the you and the lawyer on last time, and it kind of went awry on us a little bit. But I'm still interested in their cause, and I'm, I hope it's going well for them. They've had dozens of um, soldiers join their lawsuit Good. since he was on your program. Yeah, Good. he's been uh, doing some other interviews, and uh, and people are finding out about this, and we're trying to get the word out as much as possible too, so that people that might have retired from the military and are unaware of their exposure um, can can possibly get some you know financial help for the medical issues that they're going to be dealing with. In, any they change? They were all exposed quite severely. Yeah. Any change in, in, in the government line on exposure rating or exposure levels, and or is it still the status quo? Just well, okay. I think they want to up them again. And I know some, uh, some Fukushima people that are actually going to be presenting uh, a plan to Congress to try to reduce the amount of radiation that's allowed in our food from 1,200 becquerels per kilogram down to 5. Russia actually only, only allows 30. Mm. I mean, think about that, and they still have a large a number of children that have, you know, the gastrointestinal tracts of, like, you know, 80-year-olds and uh, severe problems with their health just at those levels. And in Japan, it's lower. I think it's 100. Um, Great Britain is, like, 600, but here in the U.S., we're 1,200 because they upped them so much after Fukushima. And they didn't tell anybody they did this. It was only because of a letter from Lisa Jackson that we found out about it. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, we, we just, you know, we, we pass a law to make things okay or, or, or change regulation to make things okay. Uh, it's the most asinine form of governance you can even contemplate, you know, this, uh, this force that is invisible, but the, the effects are, you know, down the road. So we'll just uh, make it okay now. That way we don't uh, disrupt any commerce or, or any uh, uh, industry that might have uh, been instrumental in funding campaigns or uh, funding careers, uh, but we all end up paying for it in the long run. So, I mean, it, it is just terrifying. I do need to know, though, what is TEPCO's uh, latest uh, uh, prediction on containment? And, you know, it wasn't there even talk of restarting or continuing restarting process uh, on this plant? Well, they're, they're uh, saying that it'll take 30 to 40 years to decommission the plant. Yeah. That makes that would make it actually safe for you know people to inhabit the areas around it too, and it's just not possible. Um, even Michio Kaku has said it's going to take centuries to decommission that plant if they can ever do it. I mean, really, the only thing they could do at this point is encase the entire place in concrete, or um, <laughs> this sounds terrible, but nuke it and blow it into the ocean because it's already contaminating the ocean at such high levels. And at least then you're not sacrificing your air yeah. from this stuff that's constantly, you know, um, steaming out of the ground. And, and recently we've had uh, some video captures from the plant that shows, you know, these huge steam events are going on and they correspond to this new xenon detection and this was around the time that um, I flew also in a plane and with a Geiger counter and measured some really high levels of radiation in the sky. And um, Yoshi Shimatsu gave an interview, I think, two nights ago on, on Rents, where he said the same. And his, his numbers were even higher than mine when he just recently flew to the West Coast. What, where, did you just pack a Geiger counter onto the plane with you? How did you do that? Just go, you know, I'm t bringing this on, and then it went... It was going off while you were traveling. Well, I just had it in my in my uh, purse, and um, I had set the counter because I I didn't expect it to go over two hundred CPMs while I was flying. So I actually set the alarm at a thousand to make sure that it wouldn't go off and like scare people on the plane because I wanted to right. run it during the entire flight. 
And we actually had a bomb threat at the terminal the morning that we flew. So our flight was delayed, and I hadn't slept the night before. So as soon as we got on the plane, I turned on the Geiger to see what the levels were on the ground. And they were kind of the same that they are at my house, like, you Which know, 40, 50, 40, okay. 50 CPMs. And um, shortly after the plane took off, um, I fell asleep. And about a half an hour into the flight, the alarm started going off. And it was like, you know, beep, 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 like it was really loud. And it woke me up and I was like, oh, my God, you know, we're not, we haven't even reached our flight altitude yet. And this thing is already at 1,000. And I think the highest it got was like 1,395. So I shot some video and I took some pictures and, you know, um, put some stuff on Instagram about it. And then... Well, hold on, hold on, hold that thought. We'll we'll pick up on that story when we come back. That's inc that's incredible. I want to know what the reaction of the people on the plane. Christina Consalo, also known as Ratrick, we'll be right back with her and more Wide Awake News Radio. Please hang tight. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Christina Consalo, also known as Ratrick, is our guest. We're continuing the conversation. For those of you on uh, Justin TV, we're hearing about the the levels of uh, of radiation that are normal and whatever normal is. But uh, as Gary pointed out during the break, there is no safe level. However, uh, you know, in the in the mid '60s, anything higher than that CPM is is a, is a concern, uh, is what you know the experts that you have spoken to and, and uh, that you trust have said. So you're on the ground at 40 or 50 CPM. You uh, you get to altitude and you're at what? It was just under 1400. It kind of bounced between like. 1150 and, and 1350 um, for about two and a half hours straight. And I wish I knew that the, the Geiger had a, a total count feature because I would have turned it on in the, the first part of our flight because we had, you know, four legs of a flight to get to Mexico and back. And so just on one leg of that flight flying from Charlotte to Cancun, we were exposed to 200,000 counts total. And that's... That's just way too much, you know, and we've all been sick since I ended up in the hospital in Mexico. I was actually really sick there. I had a kidney problem that started the, the day after we got there and uh, it kind of ruined it for me for the rest of the trip. And I've been sick ever since I got home with like upper respiratory stuff. And uh, a lot of the kids that went with us were about 100 people from my daughter's school that were all on the same trip. Uh, a lot of them have been sick and had skin problems. And, I mean, um, what was really upsetting there was the amount of plant damage. And In Mexico? Know, in, in Mexico. And, and uh, there's an uh, epidemiologist and statistician. He has a blog called Bobby One. And he just recently published some information on plant mutations that are occurring in Japan and in the Northern Hemisphere. And he had posted all these videos of, like, sick palm trees in La Jolla. And then, of course, you know, we have the seal problem where all these baby seals are washing up in the, from the Pacific and Southern California. I'm having people already send me pictures of roses and dandelions and things that are mutated in Southern California already because their growing season had started about a month ago. And um, I found my first mutations here today, too, in some dandelions, really big ones. And uh, this, this isn't going to go away. In fact, if these dandelions that we all saw last year have viable seeds, we're going to have billions more of these mm. mutated plants. And that's what this uh, statistician epidemiologist is saying as well. And so I sent him my videos from Mexico, and I said, all this stuff that you're showing that's happening in Japan – the rads were low in Mexico. They're not getting it in the air like we're getting here. But there's something raining out, and it's burning the plants. And the, there's um, signs of all different kinds of mutations that were found after Chernobyl, after Three Mile Island. And the same thing is happening after Fukushima. There's something called witch's broom, where plants that normally have a single stem will branch into many stems, like a broom. Mm -hmm. um, there's gigantism, where some part of a tree or a, a bush or a flower will be um, many times larger than what's normal than the rest of the plant. And... Um, and mutations where the leaves grow in, in funny, unusual ways from parts of the plant that aren't normal. And I documented all of these things and, uh, and sent them to this guy. And he said, you know, the, the big problem, what people don't realize, too, is it's not just the radiation, but the core exit 
that's being rained out from the Gulf is mixing with the radiation, and you get something called a multiplier effect. That's when radiation and chemicals come together, and they'll affect an organism tens or hundreds or thousands of times more than just the single thing would, like the core exit by itself or the radiation by itself. You get a, a, syner a synergy between these two things. Mm. And he thinks that's what's going on with the plants. And, I mean, it's something people will eventually catch on to when everything outside looks dead. Um, you know, at that point, it's too late. You know, we've already gone through two years of this. People who have been paying attention and put the time and the effort into researching these past accidents and the cover-ups that have happened and the people that have gotten sick for, from it know what we're in for from Fukushima. And that's just from the information that we have because TEPCO is withheld so much, we really don't know how bad things are over there. And because our government has withheld so much information, we don't know how bad things are here except for all these independent people who have gone out and bought Geiger counters and taught themselves how to use it and taught themselves how to mitigate because it's not coming from any of the sources that we would expect to protect us. Yeah, no doubt. In fact, exactly the opposite is coming from these sources that we expect. You know, that we don't expect, we demand because, you know, we pay for them uh, uh, as far as uh, protection and, uh, and we're certainly not, uh, we're not being told the truth. Uh, in you said you found for the the first sign where you live of uh, of uh, plants that were mutated, right? Just today. Yeah, I was actually visiting a friend of mine who's in jail, so she's incarcerated, and um, I I uh, had a visit. I don't know if we needed today. that part of the story. I don't know if we no, needed that. No, no, <laughs> there's there's a point to the story. Okay, all right. In in jails, the um, the ventilation system is is closed, so they keep recycling the same air. And you'd think that that was a bad thing in terms of like sickness and disease and germs and bacteria, and it is. But when you think about the radiation, and I walk outside of the jail, and there's dandelions growing all over, and they're mutated. These cops that work in the jail, because they go outside to go home or do other things, they're getting exposed to more radiation than the inmates, because the inmates are in a closed ventilation system. I mean, the irony is just unbelievable. Yeah. So you saw <laughs> that, is, that is very ironic, yes. It's good to be a prisoner, I guess, is the moral of that story, unless, as far as exposure to airborne radiation. But you, this is where you found uh, the mutation in, in dandelions today? Yeah, Can, yeah, and I shot some, I shot some video, and I uploaded it uh, to YouTube before I came but, on tonight. Oh, well, the question I had was: it, Is this the first time you've seen this in where you're at? This mutation? I mean, is it is, so? It's not only persistent, but it's getting worse. The spring, the spring, it's the first time. But no, I started noticing mutations in my area of the country in July of 2011. And that's what clued me in that something's really wrong here. And I was a photographer for 25 years. And, and as a hobby, you know, I would shoot stuff in nature's. And I love trees and plants. And I had a big garden. And I know when something's not right. And I saw uh, oak trees, saplings that had these huge palm trees pom-pom things on top of them and I was like what is that you know and I took pictures of it and I sent it around to some people and they're like yeah that's a mutation and then I started checking like mushrooms and I started seeing it in dandelions and then the following season of 2012 is when we really got hit and I had created a Facebook page called mutation watch it's where people could just upload images of what they find in their own yards and gardens is so there any Go ahead, pay attention sorry. to this, know when they see something that's not right. And when you start seeing this is coming from people all over the Northern Hemisphere, there, it's an environmental factor. So what's causing it? Well, I would assume it's radiation because we know that we've been exposed to Fukushima and we know that fallout has landed here because even the USGS measured it. But they shut down all the testing in April of 2011 and said, we don't need to do this anymore. And that plant has been having, you know, radioactive gas and steam coming out of it. And it's poor and the water that they're using to cool the fuel is pouring into the ocean. Their storms, all the storms that hit the West Coast are generated out of the Pacific. And then we have this enormous, um, you know, tsunami debris field that may or may not be radioactive, although every expert I've talked to said it definitely is, especially things that are porous, you know, foam and wood and things like that. Right, which is, and, which is going to be what's floating, right? This is gonna yeah, be this. And, and this is all going to hit the beaches. 
And the federal government gave the state of Washington $50,000 to clean it up. $50,000? You know, I need to do a math problem that shows, like, how many trucks it took to truck away everything at 9-11 and how much all that weighed because we have an idea of what this debris field weighs. And in terms of cost, I mean, this could contaminate all of the beaches on the West Coast. And it's already been hitting Alaska and B.C. in a very big way. This started last year. Yeah, fifty grand. Wow, there's a lot of concern there uh, for the for the effects. We're going to be back with uh, Christina Gonzalo, and and I, you know, I, I know what you want to talk about uh, with some of these emails, and that's exactly what we're going to start with. We'll be back in just a minute. Hang tight. Conjoined mushrooms. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Christina Gonzalo, also known as the Rad Chick, is our guest, uh, and we were just I, I'm at Fukushima Facts looking at some of these uh, images of of uh, mutated plants, and they're they're very stunning. Uh, not in a good way. They're, they're, it's pretty shocking what's happening that most people have no clue about because there's certainly no establishment media covering this topic. Uh, give us again before we uh, before we continue. Uh, Fukushima Facts obviously uh, is uh, is a site, but where else can we see your work? Oh, yeah, all my links are there, and then I have a YouTube channel which is now Rad Chick. Um, oh, from what how'd you do that? Before. Did because you start a new the one? Punk, the punk girl band that had Rad Chick closed their channel. So I got the name. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Rad Chick on YouTube. It used to be something different, but uh, it isn't that anymore. So uh, Rad Chick on YouTube, FukushimaFacts.com, uh, and your program is every... What? Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. on UCY TV. All right. Now let's get into it. Uh, I, I know that I was chatting with you before uh, you came on tonight. And uh, you kind of wanted to keep on the same topics of uh, uh, destruction of freedom, and uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about Boston. What are the emails you're getting about Boston? Well, uh, people have a lot of questions, you know. Yeah, um, I do be too. Because we have a, a show called Nuked Radio, and we talk about all the different ways of getting nuked. I guess they're they're. Uh, getting wise to the fact that their rights are going to be nuked soon and that some of these events are probably going to lead up to that. I mean, it, it was absolutely horrifying what happened in Boston. I mean, the, the bombing was bad enough, but the martial law that was rolled out afterward was even worse. And when you consider this is like three people that were killed over this, and they closed down an entire city. Last night in Chicago, 10 people were killed within one hour. They didn't shut down Chicago because of it. And, um, you know, at no time was martial law ever used. It, they called it shelter in place. And um, <laughs> I love that one. I love that, yeah, shelter in place. Yeah. And, you know, the videos are just starting to come out of people, like, being dragged out of their homes with their kids and being, you know, frisked and, and sent down the street. And um, it, it was pretty horrifying. And I had a mother that grew up in Nazi Germany. So um, I've heard stories like this my whole life of, um, of these tyrannical governments and how dangerous they are. And, you know, my big concern is, like, people... Are, are being, you know, scared into this need to continue the war against terror. And what we really need to ask ourselves are, who are the real terrorists? And um, just knowing, you know, what I've uncovered from studying Fukushima and learning of all these, you know, intricate relationships between the corporations and the politicians and the banks and the media, um, you know, I think that's who we really need to be afraid of and at some point you hope that like you know logic and history wins out because if we give up any of the rights that we have now we won't be getting them back and you know I know that they want to control us and I know that we have enormous problems in our banking system and that someone is going to need to be held accountable at some point for those problems when it all falls apart and there's just no way that it's sustainable and so when it does fall apart who are they going to blame to protect the people that caused it because there's going to be a lot of people that are very angry when they can't access their money and um, when they find out the truth of what has been going on and um, you know the, the real threat is not the terrorists and if you look at just like I wrote a couple of numbers down from earlier today, 2001 to 2009. 
Yeah. We we lost 3,000 people due to terrorism. During that same time period, we lost 192,000 to homicide, 204,000 to drunk driving, uh, 874,000 to diabetes, 4,462,000 to cancer, and um, 5 million to smoking, 6 million to heart disease. But, you know, where, where have we spent our money? $700 trillion to fight terrorists that killed 3,000 people. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've seen polls where, you know, as, as much as po- possibly 87 percent of people now don't even think that, you know, 9-11 was conducted by the terrorists, that they think it was an inside job by our government because, you know, logic and physics and history pointed that out to them eventually, you know, 11 years later. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I didn't want to interrupt you because you're giving a lot of good information there. But you're, you're 100 percent right. This is what I talk about all all the time. In fact, uh, uh, directly after Boston, when uh, the lockdown occurred, uh, the, the martial law occurred, rather, um, I started looking at some statistics, too, and, and, and I put out in a video, look, you know, should we shut down Utah? Because Utah is the beehive state, right? And bees kill 53 people every year in the United States of America. So, I mean, this is insanity. Not belittling the deaths of three people in Boston or the hundreds of people that were injured. That, those are terrible, uh, terrible events that occurred. But my God almighty, we, we, are, we are destroying this nation in the name of saving this nation from terror. So if we believe for one second that, you know, that the events that occurred in Boston, the response was justified, man, it is time to wake up and realize that that, that isn't the, tr- the path that we want to go down. We don't want to go down that road. And unfortunately, uh, you know, it isn't a matter of, you know, if we're going to go down the road, it's how far down it we have went. And it is a long, long way when we have out of all the people that, that we consider to be establishment, right? Establishment uh, newscasters uh, or establishment uh, politician. You know, I think it was a uh, uh, Bill Maher is the only uh, establishment media individual that questioned uh, the the lockdown of Boston for uh, for the event that happened there and Ron Paul Ron Paul came out and said the event the lockdown itself was worse more egregious uh, than the actual event so there's there is no shortage of uh, of crises that can put, be put before the people we, what we need to realize is the response to these crises isn't about fixing that immediate problem that immediate crisis it's about uh, the continued uh, decay. Uh, of, uh, of our freedom, right? Yeah, and at no other time in our history have we been exposed to really so much propaganda between, like, you know, TV and magazines, and, you know, it's basically like five major companies that run all of these institutions and, you know, we're told to um, buy things that we don't need and take medications that will make your life better. And, you know, people are constantly being distracted by this um, just overwhelming amount of propaganda. And if you look to um, countries that where they have like clamped down like to a militarized state, I I lived in Spain for about 10 years when I was a kid off and on because one of my parents worked there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't remember who the guy was that was uh, in charge at the time, but I, I know there were tanks all over the place, and they would roll down the streets at night, and, you know, everybody in the airports had machine guns. And there were still, like, bombings happening all the time. You can never win this war on terror, but you have just endless profiting from it. Yeah. You know, but it's not something that can be won, and if anything, it makes people more mad. So that they get, almost get more rebellious over having their rights taken away, and um, Look, I, you know, I think eventually, you know, people they're they're worried that there'll be a mass groups of citizens that are going to try to make citizen arrest because we know who all these people are. They're not nameless. We know who the people are who run these corporations. We know who's been manufacturing everything in the background, and I think they're probably pretty scared right now. And their desperation is really showing 
in this latest thing that happened in Boston, all of the misinformation and disinformation that has come out after this event, that to throw people off track, this is um, customary after false flag events that this happens. And then we have numerous other you know, events that have occurred in the last week that are just extraordinary that they've all happened in the same time frame. And I'm talking about, like, the fertilizer plant explosion, and we had an yeah. explosion at a refinery in Detroit, and there's this huge explosion in Mobile, Alabama. And, you know, this is all crumbling infrastructure. Could this really happen this fast? And, um, you know, in every one of these reports, there's eyewitnesses that are saying strange things have happened, like there were weird-looking planes in the air and people setting up cameras the day before the explosion of the fertilizer plant. They won't let any media into that area to cover what's going on now, but the government has sent a team to investigate, so you're putting the fox in charge of the hen house Again, we know that they can't be trusted for numerous reasons, but they're going to conduct the investigations. And there's no way that they can come out right at the beginning and say that any of these events were not sabotage. It takes very highly trained individuals doing months and months of research to determine what the cause of all these events are. But who's going to be telling us? The government, because they're the ones who will conduct these investigations. No doubt. And and you're 100% correct. When, when you get the news, when you get... When it's all shoved into 24 hours and you have the, you know, the, the event, the, the conclusion, the guilty party all wrapped up in a nice little paper package. And then, you know, you can start selling Remember Boston T-shirts three days later. Uh, it should be screaming in your mind that this isn't right. You're, you're correct. There's no way you're going to find out this uh, fertilizer plant is, you know, an act of God or whatever uh, they wanted to blame it on. Uh, without uh, an investigation, my God, you had tons of fertilizer blow up. You have a you know massive crater that you're going to go through and and, uh, and try to find the cause of it. To think that it could be all wrapped up in a tiny little package, y you should be paying attention really to to reality and not uh, uh, the reality show that is uh, presented to the people as fact. I wanted to cover this uh, in in Boston last year. Right, Boston is a pretty safe safe city. Six hundred or close to six hundred thousand people in city limits. Fifty eight murders in Boston last year. You know, in Chicago, they probably have that this week. But so 58 murders in, in, or homicides in Boston, not one time except for uh, on uh, the marathon day did they implement martial law. So, uh, I mean, back to the reaction and, uh, and the ability for the powers that be to sell this off as normal uh, and even patriotic, it's, it's sickening. Uh, not only is it sickening it should tell us exactly where we're heading into the kind of world the kind of country we're heading into christina thank you very much for coming on and i appreciate it uh always a pleasure to have you on here and uh we'll definitely get you on here again uh within a month or so for sure okay thanks charlie always a pleasure christina consola also knows the rad chick please uh, check out her work at uh, fukushimafacts.com you can find all of her links there and uh we'll we'll see you here uh, again real soon guys stay tuned for jeff Rince. Because he is coming up next. We'll be back tomorrow night at the same time, 5 o'clock west, 8 o'clock east. Have a good night. Peace.